the Fulani ready to ready for Nigeria breakup. Mighty Allah. Wow. <laughs> they are ready to go. <laughs> we have no choice. They are free to go to wherever their land is. Afani Ferret is responding to that. He said they are ready to go. And then Afani Ferret is saying, hey, 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 you can go. Let me read this story in its, in its entirety. It says, The mighty Allah, Kutal Hall, has declared that the Fulani ethnic group stock is ready to break away from Nigeria if the country comes to that eventual decision. Yeah, we want you to go. You don't have to wait. We're asking you to just leave us alone. Go back to Fort Ajalon, where you come from. The National Secretary of the Association, Al San Saleh, made the declaration on Friday while reacting to the decision of the 17 southern governors to ban open grazing after they held a meeting on Tuesday in Ahaba, Delta State. You said Ahaba. It is not Ahaba, it is Ahaba. Seller said, if the South feels because they have oil, they can show this open hatred to the Fulanese, I bet you, you are late. Mm -hmm. You cannot expel an ethnic group that has a population of 17 million people from an entity. So, if the ag agitators want to divide the country today, or the minute or this minute, we will budge or we will help. We are ready to go. We are more prepared than any other tribe. Nowhere is this type of ban done. You can only control it, but the Fulani, the nature move about with their animals. They are not only in Nigeria. They are all over the Africa. They should go to other places. Just get out with, uh, get out, leave the house and land alone and for the house of people. In an interview with Saturday Tribune, Salas stated that the issue of Fulani herders was resolved by governors of 25 years ago, but no government had deemed it fit to implement the decision, saying, We are just moving forward and backward. According to him, herders are not the problem facing the country, but the ethnic profiling of the Fulani in the country, particularly in the south, is mind-bogging. They, southerners, want to force us to react, but we don't react that way. Compared to what we went through in Guinea and Sudan, and we have survived, this is even a child's play. Wow. <laughs> okay, so you are, you are evil. Your trouble didn't even start today. We understand that 2023 is also part of the game plan. They want to get power on a platter of gold. Nobody will give them power like that. They must seek our support. People who want power don't behave in this manner. The mighty Allah scribe stated. He added, Haters are insignificant when it comes to problems of this country. Are they the owner, the ones looting the treasury? What damage are they causing to this country? Compare them with the criminal activities of Yahoo Boys, <laughs> Internet Frosters. Kidnappers, political looters, bandits in power, and vagabonds in power like Governor Samuel Autumn. Do you think if there is no oil money, all these things will be happening? <laughs> what we are saying in a nutshell, I don't know if I want to continue reading. Okay, let me continue. It says, today we are ready. Let them divide the country. Let them not wait till tomorrow. We are better prepared than any other ethnic nationality. Repeating the same thing. So we are ready. Let them divide the country. Let us die. We that don't have oil. <laughs> it's lamenting. But in a swift reaction, the pan-Yoruba social-political group, 
Afani Fere said the Fulani were free to go. If they were ready, but the Yoruba remained insistent that the country must be restructured. The spokesperson of the group, Mr. Jare Ajayi, in a telephone interview with Sunday Tribune on Saturday said, If they, Fulani, say that they are ready to go, so be it. It is up to them to go wherever their land is. Our reaction is just like our acting leader, Chief Ayo Adebanjo, said this afternoon at our meeting in Ijebuode. The Yoruba have contributed much more than any other ethnic nationality in the country. So, for that reason, anybody who had invented or invested into any venture would not want that venture to collapse. If that means because of the contribution of the Nigerian project, we would not want it to, to fail. But that is not to say that Nigeria should continue to be one Nigeria at the expense of the cooperation, peaceful coexistence of Yorubas. The primary thing is for any individual to exist in true, secure, peaceful, and safe environment atmosphere. Also, the Pan Niger Delta Forum, PA and the PANDEF, expressed disgust at mighty Allah's outburst. PANDEF's National Publicity Secretary, Ken Robinson, said on Friday that it was unfortunate that the body of cattle breeders had become the mouthpiece of the Fulani race in the country. He described the development as a shame and undeserving of response. Mighty Allah saying that Fulanese are ready for a breakup of the country. Seriously, does not does that deserve the honor of a response? When did Mighty Allah become the mouthpiece of the Fulani? It is a shame that this is how shabby they have reduced the country to. That will suffice, Robinson said. All right. So I am saying, adding to that, my dear brothers, pack your loads. Just get away. Nobody wants you. Biafra is here to say, Odudu is here to say. Very soon, the middle belters will join. <laughs> the, the outside people will, kick you, will help the outside kick you out of there because you don't belong there. You went in there and deceived their fathers and keep changing their names to, to whatever suits you. That's all that is going to be over very, very soon. Not much, not, 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 not long. I've been shorter than we think we expect it to be. Uh -huh. I came upon an article yesterday on Facebook written by somebody I respect very much. His name is Tai Obasi. Uh, Tai Emeka Obasi, he wrote something that, that, that quite attracted my, my attention because. I know his thoughts. I have read. I've read a lot of his articles. I, I know that. I know the way he thinks. Uh, he was one of those who, who thought that uh, who was to be politically correct. He thought, in, in the sense, uh, he is not uh, into. He wasn't very much into the Biafran thing at the beginning. I, I read most of his articles, so that's why I was shocked yesterday when I when I read what he wrote, and I said to myself, the best way I can comment on this is to bring it up so i'm reading it up i'm reading the entire article this morning it's quite long but uh, it's something that i really want us to deliberate on today on our conversation and tell me what you think about what is written just, just go down go slow on him don't don't don't, don't start jumping on him because uh, he is uh, he is somebody else he's a very great writer he writes he writes very well you know but the only thing is that i disagree with him on pre in principle in certain things that he says but this one I think I agree with him completely. So let me read it. It says here, written by Emeka, uh, Tai Emeka Obasi. Uh, it's with uh, Apa Alibu and 17 orders. You know, this is this is what their thoughts is on the whole thing that's happening. Better start listening to him now. Who is he talking about? He's talking about Lida Mazin Namdikanu by Tai Obasi. That title, it says, Better Start Listening to Him Now by Tai Obasi. If you haven't been listening to Mazin Namde Kanu, better start listening to him now. And when you do, better go far back 
and listen to every past broadcast of that extremely courageous dude that you can lay your hands on. Go to our our, our IPOB community radio. You know, go to the the uh, podcast. You will see all the broadcasts. He said, forget how he delivers his sermons. Forget his name callings. Just speak the facts of his messages. <laughs> By the way, our leader talks, he touches everybody. But I always add something to it. That is love. He loves you so much. My my father used to do that very much. My father would just say, Anuafia Jeb He knows I'm not Anuafia. He was just he was just trying to pull me up, you know, to go do something, you know, because if they if they if they pamper you, hey, P boy, J, no, 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 I pull that off here, you would know that the man is serious. You wake up, so that's exactly what our leader used used to do, and uh, I don't take offense about it. It's nothing. You don't have to worry. I pull that off here doesn't mean you are off here. Uh huh. So let me keep reading. I repeat, he saw tomorrow. Forget how he delivers his sermons. Forget his name callings. Just pick up the facts of his messages. Then he said, I repeat, he saw tomorrow. Yes, he did. His stone and crosses of the enemy and perceived betrayers are only based on frustration. Of course, frustration that he can't, as an Igbo man, aspire to be president in a country, mem country members of his tribe lost heart breaking immeasurable liters of blood to behold he can't aspire to be the service chief in his own country just because he was born a biafran a country he can't even express freedom of speech and fight to self-determination without having to dance with a python and declared a terrorist a country he can't get any federal appointment by merit without a quota system that be that benefits mainly the mediocre uh, the mediocre okay a country he can't even be allowed to do his private business without restrictions simply because the Igbo man must not overachieve a country that is deteriorating so fast that his own children face even worse prospects. These and many more make the Igbo leader mad and his tone betrays his emotions. But forget his choice of words in addressing even his own Igbo elders and leaders. Get to his message and then discover that apart from expressing courage that he is a genius the fulani plan for the other tribes in nigeria is now very clear to even the blind mazen namdekano started very early to fight against where we are today when he started raising alarm over ruga many thought he smoked weed did you listen to him warn hoodlums trying to capitalize on the absence of security agents on streets of Southeast that they have ESN to contend with? Did you listen to him say categorically that he doesn't know who the unknown gunmen are but hailed their cause and sternly warning them never to touch private buildings, destroy private businesses, or waste the life of any innocent citizen? Did you hear him repeatedly warn ESN never to engage private citizens, but rather to destroy any terrorist that steps feet into Southeast in any guise? Like I said, you better start listening to him. He might be described as a rebel, but clearly one with a very good cause. And he is doing it the only way he knows how. He's got guts too, and plenty of it. Pity 
that he came when the only father that should have greatly streamlined his course had sadly left the shores of Igbo land, taking off the father of Biafra, the great Ikemba of Igbo land. So what do you think? What are your thoughts? This is great. This is great. This I'm I'm so excited about it because you know why? Like I said, I know his thoughts. I know I've been reading a lot of his articles. A lot of it. Anytime he writes something, I might not pass the comment, but I look at it. But now he is now beginning to come. And I all I can say to him is maybe you knew this before, but for me, this is the time you have expressed it. So I say, Welcome to the club. Welcome to the seekers of truth. Welcome to the line of truth. Because it's you who if he did do any and uh, he, you did very well and uh, people are commenting here but i don't want to read their comments uh, i want to leave this comment to you guys that are listening to me this morning this is radio biafra usa too we are here we're going to we are ipub and there's nothing anybody can do to stop what we are our quest we know what our quest is we know where we are going we know where we are going and that's our quest is our freedom which is very very paramount to us very important to us there's nothing anybody can do we are ipob we are not like other people We're absolutely not because as i once reminded you before we came there was nobody like us now that we are here they pretend they copy they emulate they fabricate falsehood but they can never be like us long after we are gone they will wish we lived forever IPOB is very special, exceptionally special, the largest mass movement in the whole world bar none. And we did it because Chukwoke Kabiyama is with us. We did it because Chukwoke Kabiyama created IPOB himself. And we are here to pilot its affairs. We will not prevaricate. We will not stop. We will not slumber until Biafra is fully restored to its former glory. Anybody in doubt as to our resilience and our determination to restore Biafra is not only mistaken, not only misguided, but needs to see a psychiatrist because we are not stopping. I am a Namdekan and I don't stop until I get what I want.